All right, guys, so I'm going to show you guys how to install MySQL on Windows 10. So you're going to go to MySQL.com and you're just going to click on downloads and you're going to scroll down to MySQL community downloads. And we're going to go ahead and download the MySQL installer for Windows. And we're just going to click on download. So click on that right here and just click on no thanks. Just start my download. All right, so it should be done in just a couple seconds. So I'm going to click right over here and this is going to open up the program. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to do a custom installation because if we do developer default, it's going to install a bunch of stuff that we probably don't ever need or we'll never probably use anyways. So we're just going to click on custom, click next. So we're just going to go ahead and make sure we select MySQL servers and you want to select the version. So I'm going to go ahead and just select version 8, the latest one. And then for applications, now you don't have to do this, but I'm going to, I'm going to select MySQL Workbench, the latest version. This is going to give us a nice GUI to visualize our data. And I think I'm going to go ahead and also select MySQL Shell. Okay, that should give us another command line application. I mean, if you're using Microsoft Excel or Visual Studio and you need MySQL with it, then you can add these applications. And there's also MySQL router, which I'm not really sure what that is. And then there are connectors, which we're not going to need for now. And then there's documentation, but we're not going to need that. So we're going to only install three products. So that's MySQL server, the workbench and the shell. All right, so now we're just going to install them. Okay, so we're finally done with the installation. Click on next. And so now we just need to configure MySQL server. So we're just going to leave it as standalone MySQL server. And for the configuration type, we'll leave it alone as development computer. There are other selections, so you can select for whichever one you want. Uh, and for connectivity, we're going to leave it as TCP port 3306. And then we're going to leave the authentication method as use strong password encryption. So now we're just going to go ahead and type in a password. Okay, and we can also add additional user accounts if we want to. So I can click on here and I can say, hey, look, let me add another username for localhost. And then we can select whatever rights we want. So they can be the database admin, DB designer manager. There's a whole bunch. So by default, the account is root but you don't really want to use root in practice you don't use the root account you use a different account and you give it certain permissions so i can type another password if i want to and it says it's weak but we'll leave it alone for now okay so let's click next and we're going to leave these checked so configure mysql server as a windows service leave that checked, and then we're going to start the mysql server as at system startup so this is going to start up mysql when your computer first opens up and having configured MySQL server as a Windows service checked is going to run My MySQL as a background service. All right, so now we're just going to click on execute and let's let MySQL installer do its thing. So everything successfully finished, seems like it. We can even click on the logs and you can look through it just to make sure. And you can see that it says everything was good. So attempted to start the service, successfully started. Okay, cool. So we're going to click on finish and let's click on next and yeah, let's go ahead and click on finish. So it's going to say start MySQL workbench after setup and start MySQL shell after setup. This is MySQL workbench and this is basically a graphical user interface. And so you can see that it has a connection already. So the default user is root. Okay. So we're going to connect and you, now you want to type in the root password. So in the, during the installation process, we typed in the password for the first time that was for the root account. When we created a second account, that was for our other account. So we're just going to type in our password. Okay, and we are connected successfully. And you can also connect with the other account too that we created. So we're going to click on the plus sign, new connection. Give it a connection name if you want to. The host is going to be our local host. And then we'll leave the port alone. So the username we're going to set as Anson. And then... Password, we're going to type the password that we set. And yeah, you can also play around with uh, the connection as well. But we'll just go ahead and test connection. 
and you can see that it says successfully made the MySQL connection. And uh, yeah, so we can click OK. Oh, so let's just say Anson MySQL. Okay, so now we can connect and we're inside our database. But I'm also going to show you guys how to log into MySQL with the command line. So you're going to type MySQL and you're going to see that it says access denied. That's because we need to specify the user account. So root hyphen P. Okay, so now we're connected. And if I do show databases, you can see that we don't really have much. Okay, now let me see if I can let me make sure I can log into my other account. So that's MySQL hyphen U and then your username hyphen P. So I had another account called Anson that I created. And there we go. So we're logged in and I should be able to create a database. And then I can use that. Okay, cool. All right, now a couple of issues that you might run into. I actually tried recording this like 30 minutes ago and I had an issue with my SQL installer where it installed everything successfully but it wouldn't start it up as a Windows service and I wasn't able to log into my database. I think it may have been because I had a previous MySQL folder already in my program files. And when it tried to override it, there may have been some kind of confliction. So I'm not sure, but uh, I uninstalled it and then restarted my computer and then I reinstalled it again and everything seemed to have worked fine. So there are a couple things that you could try. You can go into the Windows Service Manager and try to manually start up MySQL as a service. If that doesn't work, I would just suggest uninstalling MySQL restarting your computer and then going through the installation process again and seeing if it works. You might also get an issue where if you type MySQL, it's going to tell you, oh, MySQL, it's going to tell you MySQL is not a found command. And what that means is you need to go to your environment variables on Windows or whatever operating system you're on, and you need to configure MySQL so that you have the bin folder for your MySQL installation added to the environment variables added to the path. So just Google something like MySQL environment variables and then you'll find a bunch of results or even on YouTube really. And I think that's pretty much it. And if you somehow can't get MySQL to work, there are other alternatives such as Postgres SQL. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this whole video. If you guys like this video, feel free to subscribe or like. I post videos related with programming. So if that interests you, definitely subscribe and check out my other videos. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.